Coriolis force. Now, um, here's where it comes into the atmospheric application. Very often, we find that air is moving along around the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, in a state of geostrophic balance. Geostrophic balance is a particular kind of force balance. Remember, hydrostatic balance was a kind of force balance. It was a balance between weight and the vertical pressure gradient force. Well, this is more of a force balance in the horizontal, right? So it's horizontal forces we're talking about. Pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force, when they come into balance, we call that geostrophic. Geo meaning earth, strophe coming from a root meaning turning. So we know it has to do something with the turning of the earth. Well, in this case, it has to do with the Coriolis force. It results in some very odd things that I'll show you as we move through this section. For example, the wind blows parallel to the isobars instead of across them. And the speed of the wind is related to the isobar spacing. The geostrophic force balance applies actually most of the time in the free atmosphere. I, I, I hesitate to give you a number, but I would say maybe 90 or 95 percent of the time, when you're above the boundary layer, um, the air is moving along in a pretty good state of geostrophic force balance. This is why it's so important for us to understand this particular characteristic of the atmosphere. It is invalid, however. You do not have geostrophic force balance down in the frictional boundary there where there's a lot of turbulence or in strong storms or other disturbances. So it's not universally applicable, but it's, it's, widely, it's widely applicable. Here's a little cartoon then of describing what I mean by geostrophic balance. So if I have, this is a, a plan form view. So I'm looking down at the surface of the Earth, north, south, east, west. And um, if there happens to be high pressure to the south on this particular day, and low pressure to the north, then there's going to be a pressure gradient force acting on a parcel of air sitting here from high to low, right? If I've got an object, no matter how small it is, if there's slightly higher pressure on one side and lower pressure on the other side, there's going to be a, a net force on that. That net force is what we call the pressure gradient force. We call it a pressure gradient force because it arises because there is a gradient. Gradient means a change in pressure with position. Um, so high pressure here, low pressure there means that object is going to have a slightly higher pressure on the southward side, a little lower pressure on the northern side, and the net force is going to be to the north called the pressure gradient force. Now. Um, if it's in geostrophic balance, it has to have a Coriolis force that is equal and opposite to that. This is a vector balance, so the speed and the, the magnitude and the direction have to be exactly opposite to that. And now here's how the reasoning goes. If the force must be like that, then what must the air be doing? How must it be moving? It must be moving then from west to east so that the Coriolis force, which is at right angles to it, has the orientation given by the green vector. So this is the only consistent, once I draw in that pressure gradient force, then that vector and that vector are locked in. That's the only way I can draw them if uh, that air parcel is to be in geostrophic balance. These um, lines of constant pressure are called isobars. And uh, you could label them with a pressure, 1,020, 1,010, 1,990. But those are labeled, those are just lines of constant pressure drawn on a map called isobars. And so you'll notice that in this circumstance, instead of the air blowing from high pressure to low, like you would have expected, because of the Coriolis force, it moves along the isobars, not across them. Quite a surprise, because in our common world, you know, blowing up a tire to a bicycle or uh, whatever, air tends to move from high pressure to low. But on a larger scale, where the Coriolis force plays a role, it's more like this. 
air moves along the isobars rather than across them. Questions here? Now, so mass